Hello and welcome to our Thursday Reflection. I'm going to take the Old Testament reading this morning and it's from the book of Genesis chapter 32 beginning to read at the 22nd verse. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream he sent over all his possessions so Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. And as always, we give thanks to God for his word. As you may remember, Jacob is the son of Isaac. He cunningly induces his older brother Esau to sell his birthright. He cheats that same Esau to get their father's final blessing. And not surprisingly, when Isaac dies, Jacob flees the country to escape Esau's revenge. He is not very kind to Leah, his first wife, favouring her sister Rachel. And he escapes from his father-in-law Laban together with his wives, his children, his servants and slaves and a lot of livestock which Laban claims belong to him. And just prior to today's reading he's been told that as he re-enters his old homeland brother Esau is waiting to greet him. So all is ready for a meeting between the estranged brothers and then we hear of this bizarre encounter. Now, we might think that on his past history, Jacob is not the kind of person to be selected by God for a personal appearance. And yet, as Peter discovers in the Acts of the Apostles, God is no respecter of persons. In other words, God does not look and judge with our prejudiced eyes. Oh yes, Yes, he, he sees the things we've done wrong, the sins we've committed, the mistakes we have made. But he also sees the potential in each one of us. He sees in Jacob, a man who for all his faults has the strength and determination to play an important part in God's story. But if Jacob is to fulfil his potential, God must wrestle with him and bring him to a better understanding of himself. What does this encounter teach us? There are times in all our lives when we struggle. We wrestle with our faith, with our doubts, with our ability or inability to pray. And that is all right. Because when we admit to God that we are struggling, he will be there with us in the struggle. God sees not just what we are, but what we can be. He believes we are worth fighting for and, we see, as we see in Jesus, worth dying for. Just for a moment, visualise any wrestling match you may have seen or caught a glimpse of. It seems to me that a lot of the time it is two people just holding on to one another. And that's how I visualise this encounter between Jacob and God. 
God trying to hold on to Jacob. Jacob not wanting to be held, wanting to be free, wanting a blessing, but without having to change from the old Jacob, relying on his own strength and cunning. There are aspects to all our characters that can be used for good or for evil. And in this case, it was time for Jacob to use his particular strengths for good. Not just his own good, but for the good of all his people. So God gives him a new name. No longer Jacob, but Israel. Names are significant in the Bible. And when someone is given a new name, it reveals a new relationship with God. Think of Simon becoming Peter and Saul becoming Paul. Jacob came away from this encounter with a new name, with God's blessing, but also with a dislocated hip. Jacob, proud of his own strength, now has a constant reminder that God is stronger and that his own future depends on the blessing of God. Amen. So let us pray. Father, in the struggles of this life, hold on to us, never let us go. And in the fullness of time, bring us into our promised land. Amen. Goodbye, God bless and keep safe.